used to be the public library. They closed it for termites. They closed it? Never heard of Bug Spray in Louisiana? <laughs> I wish I would have thought of that. The fact is, there wasn't no saving it. Bugs chewed up the beams. This whole damn city's rotten with them. <laughs> hey, you gonna watch that step? You said the victim slept here. You're thinking vagrant, right? Nope. A PhD in uh, expensive classification, library science. They didn't take all the books, so they hired him to catalog all that old French stuff. He moved in for the job. Dr. Chavo Reynoso, faculty of the University of New Mexico. You know him? Hard to tell, at least not from the name. What's the drifts? Thanks. Was there a letter? Nope. I got word to leave it like we found it until you showed up. Well, if the killer brought one, he would have to take it with him. Doesn't look like any of this furniture was moved. But there's no blood on anything except the floor, so if he was stabbed after he was hung up. Anybody knows how long it would take to lose all your blood drop by drop? Too long. Emmy said he had a ligature wrapped around his neck. It's gone, too. Is this where he left the message? Yeah, that's the one for you. But it's not a call. He used the memo button to record it right here. Tell the VF. I mean, the VCTF. I'm retro. First class, numero uno, 404-555-0111. Sounds like he was reading or something. Well, he had a line of number for you people. <laughs> John, you want to have that message again? Sure. Tell the VF, I mean the VCTF, I'm retro. First class, numero uno. I'm retro, numero uno. Jack's going back to number one. His first victim, Janice Fletcher. Fletcher? How do you figure that? The orange electrical cord. It's too deliberate. Have one of your forensic team bring in an ultraviolet light, please. Manny, bring one of those UV tubes. The orange one is coiled the same way as the one he used on Janice Fletcher. You said your patients never complained. The baby. He's got my personality. He's testing out his boundaries. Maybe we should postpone this until tomorrow. I want you pushing yourself, Grace. If you don't feel up to it, we'll postpone it. You know, you used to work me 16 hours at a stretch. Now everybody is so careful. Morgan, he wants me home. My sister wants me in bed. And my mother wants me back on 119th Street with her. I got news. I think of eviscerating dead people as prenatal aerobics. I'd say he died somewhere between 9 and midnight by asphyxia. All the bleeding was post-mortem after he was strangled. Some of the blood settled in his feet. Yeah, that's true. He's got quite a bit of lividity. It's as though his feet were lower than his trunk. Are the cuts around his wrists, are they deeper than the ones around his ankles? Oh, yeah, they're quite a bit deeper. 
So he was hung up by his wrist for some time before he tied him up by the ankles. From the amount of lividity, I'd say two hours. Hanging and stabbing for two hours, that's pretty dead. Yeah, he was stabbed over 100 times. If his heart hadn't stopped, he would have bled out a lot sooner than he did. It sounds like rage, but rage isn't Jack's thing. No, this isn't a rage killing. It's too staged, it's too neat. It's typical Jack. Even down to an old M.O. That's what confuses me. Jack never kills the same way twice. Well, he didn't. There is a new wound pattern. Instead of his favorite long downward stroke or clean slice, some of these are shorter stroke with a left twist. Twist on a twist. That's Jack. It's murder. It's Jack. But it's not. Right. Why would he write, miss me, Sam, I do not miss you, and then kill someone to send that message? I mean, it's contradictory. It's also petulant, like a spoiled child. Jack tried to make you feel like a killer and failed. Yeah, well, I'm not sure you would see it that way. Sam, we still need players. Oh, I told you, I can't. Chloe's school is having an open house that day. Good news. They changed the date on that now. It's the next Saturday. You checked on me? You called the school? That's illegal. I know, but the first game is against domestic terrorism, and they are begging to get their butts kicked. Bailey's been out of the hospital for two months. He's quarterback in the game. He is? Yeah, you bet. The rattlesnake, he moves, he strikes the best. Look, I've seen Bailey play, all right? He's no Michael Jordan. Sam, Michael Jordan plays basketball. Don't be obtuse, right? You know what I mean. Look, good luck to you in the snake, but I cannot make it. Look, it's not about football. It's a good way to unplug your brain for a few hours. It'll be fun. Fun? I can't. Sorry. Why did you ask your roommate? No, uh, no, I didn't. But you know what? She's probably at home right now. You should give her a call. This is a surprise. It's closing time. Get for a drink? Uh, I don't think so. Please. So, what can I do for you? Read this. It's, it's not public knowledge yet. Deputy Commissioner. Congratulations. It's a big step. Caught Ellen by surprise, too. She didn't mention it? I haven't talked to Ellen in over a month, Art. And whose idea was that? Well, if you spoke with her, you should know. You cost me my wife. She left you before I even met her, Art. When I told you it wasn't over between you and me, I meant it. The director sent me to report back to him on when in hell you're going to catch Jack of all trades. Tell him when we catch him. Since you hung out your shingle, his frequency has increased. He's killed nine more people. I know the numbers, including the 34 killers we put in jail. I am ordering a full review, top down, prior to my recommendation that we put you out of business. It's a miracle you still have a gig, Malone. I hear everyone is gunning for you, uh, even your kid. Is she still really a fugitive? Just walk away, Art. <laughs> I dreamed about it. I never ever dream. But I dreamed about it. Only one dream. I've lost count of how many I've had. <laughs> What was it like? Stabbing that man. Oh, knife. Oh, it hurt my arm. Hmm. What are you staring at? You're getting more and more beautiful. I want you to do something for me. What? Just throw it, Sharon, and throw it hard. Oh, 
I know you're only doing that to make me feel guilty. I mean, you got this perfect body. You're you're skinny as a rail, and yet every morning you come out here and you punish yourself. Look, why feel guilty? You know, you're the one that eats anything. You never gain an ounce. And it's great for stress. I should do something, shouldn't I? Yeah. We can go hiking again. Oh, I hate hiking. Oh, hey, are you going to play that football game on Saturday? What football game? Didn't John call you? No, we, we keep missing each other. Sounds to me like we're avoiding each other. Probably. <laughs> we haven't been on a date in, like, weeks. How long are you going to keep that up? John is not going to be the one to say it's over, but making a date to break up isn't exactly on the top of my list either. Right. So I'm going to get to my studio and uh, have a good day. All right. Don't Thank think you. too much. I will. I'll be good. Right. Chloe. Breakfast. Morning, Mommy. Hi, sweetie. How are you? It's good. Mm -hmm. You smell good. Thank you. That's the first thing you brought me for my birthday. Oh, you know what? I did get your books from the library, honey. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Football? Oh, no, that's me. Okay, Reynoso Killing has three points of comparison to Janice Fletcher's, besides the electric cord. The way it's braided, same number of slip knots, and it's definitely Jack's writing, even though he did it with a paintbrush. Now, so far, no links between Reynoso and any of Jack's other victims, and Sam, no links with your past. It could be a victim of opportunity, but I doubt it. Jack's not random. Tell the VF, I mean the VCTF, I'm retro. First class, numero uno. Retro and numero uno definitely points to Fletcher, like you said. And also could be the first one of a repeat performance. Well, Jack's taking from the top again. There's a cheery prospect. Why hang Renoso up by his hands for hours and only then hang him up spread eagle by his feet? Because he wants us to notice his feet. George. Renoso's friends described him as shy and retiring a uh, real bookworm. Not exactly the sort to wear cowboy boots. George, can you magnify the bottoms of the shoes? Not a scratch, right out of the box. Jack brought the boots to make a point. What do cowboy boots tell us? High stepping, feet up. Boots? Pulled up by your boots? By your bootstraps. Booting. That's right. why you start up a computer and give it a first set of instructions. It's called a bootstrap program. I wonder, does one set of instructions imply another? Morning. Morning. I was wondering if you could give me a hand. A second. I've been having a little trouble with my transmission. As long as I don't have to leave the garage. Six people in 10 years. Records give me everything. Evidence, photos. Quantico has an expression. Tonnage. Or a case sometimes sinks into its own weight. Mm. Look, Bailey, I want to rebuild Jack's profile from scratch. And I was thinking about running it by my doctoral tutor from Emory. Her name is Melinda Gillespie. She's not a criminologist, but I really like the way she thinks. Well, I think it's a good idea. We need it. Making the team, the ABC of sports. You gonna play? No, I'm not. I'm just reading it. Just to read. You gonna ball a bunch of people and play? I don't know how to play football. Well, I mean, this is not real football. It's touch football. There's no contact. You never played football? No. Well, look, I'll make you a deal. If you'll play, I'll teach you everything you need to know for a friendly game, which is basically the chug beer. Deal? Sam and Bailey, we got a message coming into the command center that could be another one like New Orleans. This call came in two minutes ago. The switchboard sent it right to us. Let's hear it. I'm Nouveau. Second class in many ways. Do 
don't belong. Oh, he? To replay your message, press 5. And then it just Erase. keeps press repeating. Three. Okay. It's recorded at 11.29 for automatic delivery by the BDP Message Center, which is a long-distance carrier in Biloxi. Point of origin here, 4112 Canal. Tony, get a hot shot to Biloxi and scramble the chopper. Command Center, freely. Um, take a message. Uh, look, put him through. What do we got? It should be open, but it's locked. Sounds like a radio playing. I hailed the builder, no replies. So we sealed off the exits and waited for you. Where are the employees? We've we accounted for all but one. The owner can't find his day man, a royal yount, white male 26. Jack's not going to send us a message and then lock himself inside a building. Probably not. Something's moving inside. Cowboys under control, you may have just killed a missing employee. John! Yeah. Let's move inside. Take the north side, go slow. Jack Leo left this is a John! I smell gunpowder, but I don't see anybody. That's what was moving. Understand any of this? We're working on it. Looks like Jack straightened up the bulletin board for us. He left us the page from the phone book listing this place. It has two holes in it. It's a different page, more garages. With only one hole in it. He's going to a second garage. Jack warms up with one in New Orleans, now two murders on opposite sides of Biloxi, less than an hour apart. Men, who, as far as we know, never met. Grace? The holes are larger than thumbtacks or pushpins, but they do match a competition dart. They weren't thrown at the scene. 
The pages were brought there from somewhere else. Well, if he's throwing darts, he's picking victims at random, at least within a specific subgroup, garages. Not exactly random. I mean, look at the listing for Chuck's garage. It has two holes in it. Looks like he kept throwing until he hit the same name twice. Playing darts was someone's life. Then he only threw one more dart to pick the second garage. Anyone would do, as long as it wasn't right next door. Do you want to play the tape? I'm nouveau. Second class in many ways. Don't be long. Please. Second class in many ways. Reynoso said first class. The first set of instructions. Yount must have been the second class in the many ways to die. That's also nouveau. Jack never drowned anyone before, so he's definitely not starting over. Grace's stab wounds, uh, same variation in technique as Renato? No, not as much, but it's not an exact science, and the Stommy wasn't trying to kill. First class, second class. We already know how people kill Jack. We don't need a listen from you. Bailey, I got a doctor's appointment this afternoon. I'm gonna take an hour, okay? You okay? Yeah. Physical routine. Sure. Thanks. Sam. Melinda. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, it's been so long. I know. I read about you more in the papers than you call. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm always so busy these days. Oh. How's your daughter? She's big. She's really big. Here, uh, it's a picture of her. Oh. She's seven now. You should come over and see her. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Talked to your father recently? No. Still avoiding him. When are you two ever going to settle this rift? It's such a waste. I know. Wow. Listen, Melinda, I, I invited you over here for purely selfish reasons. I need your help. Give me about an hour. Hello, George. Haven't seen my new car, have you? A lot of big changes in my life since we last did business. Firm made me a full partner. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Don't be a hypocrite. It wasn't business we did. It was uh, grand theft. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. Hypocrite is only a word to the legal profession. Or whatever it is, just please cut to the chase. I got to get back to work. I need a favor, George, and only you can do it. I happen to think when it comes to computer security, you have the most brilliant mind in the country. It's flattering, thanks, but I did you the biggest favor I could. I kept your name out of everything. Just listen to the man. George, this is Marcus Payton. Mr. Payton is my client, sir. Let's call him guarantor. If you're still fixing bank accounts by computer, I'm not touching it again. Once is enough. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, see, the way I hear it, your guardian names are on Atlanta PD, a badge named Grant hooked you up with immunity in exchange for your expertise. Then he slid your ass on over to the FBI to be with him. Now you got a nice setup with the Phoebes, a lover and a cat. Sweet. A castle built on illusion. I think what my friend Marcus means is that you weren't totally frank with the police. You failed to mention the unified bank deal in Houston. That's the only time I ever moved any money around. And only because you put me up to it. Look, you busted up their best security, George. For immunity, they like you to cop all the way. Now pick your best shots. That Houston deal comes out, George. You go back to jail. Blackmail cuts both ways? No. I spent a better part of last year racing my tracks, but your friends find out that you weren't candid. Well, they'll feel awfully betrayed, Grant. Stuck out his neck for you, George. You try and drag me into this? He'll just see it as a cheap smoke screen. Find somebody else. I can. Sure you can. It'll be a snap. Jack travels all over the country to kill. He taunts you. 
Eludes you with disguises. He plans his moves like a chess master. How the hell does one man do it? I don't know. But when he kills, it's a... It's a deeply private act. I think that he's more alone than anyone you or I could ever imagine. That's classic. Man who can't have a successful normal relationship, loser. But what intelligence. <sighs> he, he's got to be bloody brilliant. Yes, well, he's very well educated. Uh, his speech is full of literary illusions, very, very glib, very creative. Unfettered travel, limitless funds, I did. He either has family wealth or he's a very successful thief. High function, which is not consistent with a killer trap by madness and failing at everything. Exactly. He's too crazy to be as good as he is. He's obviously a control freak. But I can't find a single pattern to his killing. It's not sexual. It's not personal. Except when it relates to his obsession with you. I can never get ahead of him. All I can ever do is react. Sam, you're the key. He's found a new way to suppress his need for now, but he's always going to come back to you. It's inevitable. It's probably the only way you're going to catch him. I know. Response from Biloxi on Royal Yacht's employment record? Not yet. What you working on? This guy looks like a walking disaster area. Just cleaning out some old files, whatnot. Peyton, Marcus Peyton, don't know him. I keep my eye on the uh, Connor mob. You should give me this stuff when you run across it, George. I'll print it up. I'll get it to you. Hey, settle a bet for me. This guy who works in EDP in organized crime swears to me that um, outfits like Kayle O'Connor's are starting to go in for computer crime, and I, don't know, I just thought they were too busy busting legs. World changes. If Al Capone or Bugsy Siegel were still alive, they'd be hiring guys like you. Here's me. Now I'm supposed to go around there and. You run 30 yards on a fly. Right, well, what's a fly? I toss the ball. <sighs> he tosses the ball, I catch it. Fly. Helps me to remember. Be quiet. Hey, Bailey, you got a call. <laughs> Actually, Malone. Daddy. Uh, Francis, are you okay? Wow, this is getting old, huh? I ask how you are. You ask how I am. Tell me where you are, sweetheart. Huh? How do you know where to find me? Well, it's Wednesday. I always work out on Wednesday. Tell me where you are. I'll come get you, Freddy. Can't, can't you fix this? W. Like you did before? What's the problem? We'll work this all out. Why well, the problem, Daddy? Is that as much as I'd like to? I don't trust you. You got it? Let's go. Yeah. George. Glad you're still here. Just recorded a call from Francis. Picked up a car radio with voices. Can you filter this? Try it. Like you did before? What's the problem? Just tell me where you are, Freddy. I'll come get you. We'll work this all out. Why the problem, Daddy? Is that as much as I'd like to? I don't trust you. It's before she speaks in the music. W heavy. Why the problem, Daddy? 
Somebody will help me. What's that mean? She's home. WHVY is the FM station right here in Atlanta. Thanks, George. I'll call that a PD? Yeah. No. Burnham's off duty. Maybe I'll just drive around. If I get to her first, I might be able to talk her into surrendering rather than let the cops snatch her off the street. We'll find her, Bailey. Don't worry about that. There's only half a dozen spots. Nobody. Everybody. Are we gonna kill her? Kill her? Yeah, well, <laughs> you were too far. You had you were French fries. Look, I'd love to talk to you, John, but I gotta go. Franny. Please come home. Yeah. By home, you mean jail. I'm not gonna lie to you, Francis. You're a fugitive. We've got to go to the police. Come on, we'll put this behind us, OK? And we'll start over. No. <laughs> Your old man's been killing himself looking for you. Franny? Well, I didn't try hard enough. Franny. Let me go! Let me go, you bastard! I don't know how you could have thought I was rushing you when we were lovers. Please. Never think I take this lightly or for granted. It really doesn't matter if if you were rushing me or not. I just wasn't ready. Doesn't mean I don't have feelings for you. I did. I do. So you have feelings for me, but they're not enough for commitment? And sometimes feelings aren't enough, and you have to just move on and let it go. If you're lucky, you can stay friends. Oh, yeah. That'll be great. Yeah, we'll be buddies. Angel, come on. No, no, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not sorry. It's time. It's so warm in here. Crawl in here with me. Your tickets. We're on a schedule. Keep pushing us back, but the secondary is weak. Okay. I'm gonna pass. Okay. George, take the sideline. Okay. Angel down the middle. Okay. John, yeah. Block that big guy out. He keeps knocking me down. Okay. Okay. What do I do? Uh, you go long. Okay. Frank! Go, BCTF! Go, BCTF! Go, go, go! Give me a B! B! Give me a C!
Stop playing, okay? You have to call with Angel now, okay? Larry, take him home. Let's go, team. All right. What's going on? Uh, it's Jack. I want you to get Chloe home, okay? Hi. Chloe, you stay with Angel, okay? Mama loves you. You be careful. Delivered by messenger. Different phone books. The city names have been trimmed off. There'll be two hits on one name. Course. Initial E, page one, end of page two. Searching the national database for street names and matching residents. K, E. Sikorsky, Bangor, Maine. So the same as in Biloxi, Jack, pick the first name by random and then someone with a similar name, right? Edna Sikorsky, San Francisco. You got Maine on line one, San Francisco on two, you're on speaker. Miss Sikorsky. Yes, someone's here. He's got a knife. I'm Bailey Malone, Miss Sikorsky. Let me speak with him, please. Mr. Sikorsky, my name is Samantha Waters. I'm with the FBI. Mr. Sikorsky, are you all right? There's someone in my house. <laughs> George, roll the locals out to both houses now. Sam, you and John to San Francisco. I'll go to Bangor. If it's Jack, what's he doing on both coasts at the same time? We coordinate every move step by step on video so we don't stumble into anything alone. Jack may have written an ambush. We deploy in two teams. Got your video, John. Got you here in San Francisco. The Bangor police have secured the perimeter and waited. Same here. Nobody in or out. Wait a minute. First, get the locals clear. John, watch out for booby traps, trips, delay devices, anything is possible. If something looks suspicious, back out fast. Okay, let's move. Let's go. Same here. It's a footprint, but it's not dirt. Blood. It's dry. Same here. Okay. Proceed, John. You got some books that have been pulled out of the shelves here. Yeah, I got that, John. Yeah, you're breaking up. Can you see this? Work on my side, too. Books, toy trucks. He set the stage in both places. I hear you, sir. Yep. Yep. You're right. Yep. Open very carefully, John. Very carefully. Sam? You see it? Induction coil trigger. For any secondary trips. Yeah. I've got a body. Looks like a woman. Oh, God. Bailey, what happened? Ebenezer Scrooge, who was shown his own corpse by the ghost. It was his grave. He didn't see him twice. Two of them. There were two types of knife wounds in Reynoso's body. Two 
dead in Biloxi within an hour. It could be possible for one man, but not this. Not 3,000 miles apart. It could have been you, Sam. It should have been. He didn't mean the victim. He meant his new partner. You saying he cloned himself? First lesson. Second lesson. Graduation. Jack's created a partner in his own image. 